Ahead on this edition of SUTV News, a campus building suffers extensive smoke and fire damage. An in-studio guest is here to discuss volunteer options for students as the flood approaches. And in sports, a former well-known bison becomes a coach. A Kwanzaa building on the west side of campus has suffered serious damage. Hello everyone, welcome and thanks for joining us. I'm Andrew Young. I'm Dave Vane. At about 11.30 Wednesday morning, a fire broke out, the bulk of it in the east section of the Kwanzaa. Fire crews were able to control the blaze upon arriving. The entomology department was using it for seed experiments, housing insects, and field equipment. A colony of wasps and aphids were lost, however, the major equipment was not harmed and no one was in the building rearing in the Quonset is would set them back I would think in some of their experiments certainly there there have a cause for the fire has not yet been determined it is currently under investigation the Red River flood fight is starting earlier this year NDSU officials attended a Cass County flood meeting this week where one of the topics was the coordination of efforts between the county and the university the focus is a two-phase approach of filling and storing sandbags and the eventual deployment of the dikes. NDSU Dean of Student Life Jana Staskop says the energy needs to flow now. So much to support this institution and our students and, and what happens with NDSU. They've been tremendous in that regard. This is a way for our community to show the greater Fargo community what that means to us. Well, to citizens of Fargo, February 14th this year is more about a day of love. This Valentine's Day, the city of Fargo is asking for the love of its citizens to lend a helping hand to help the beginning of sandbagging efforts. These efforts are, of course, being started in anticipation for the spring flooding. The structure, volunteers, and operation behind the sandbagging is a process a lot of people don't get to see or hear about. And today, we're joined by Cindy Miller with First Link to give us an inside look on the structure that goes into these efforts. So thank you uh, very much for joining us today, Cindy. We appreciate it. Of course, of course. So Cindy, uh, you're here joining us from First Link. So tell us, uh, before we begin here, for those, of know, for, uh, for those of our viewers who don't know exactly what First Link is, what is First Link? First Link is a 24-hour hotline, suicide line, crisis line, volunteer center. So we connect people with opportunities, either information referral, um, suicide prevention, or volunteer opportunities. So. With that definition, my next question is, how does that definition qualify First Link to be responsible uh, for volunteer coordination when it comes to the flooding? Yeah. Um, because our experience in the call center and working with volunteers, we have contracts with the city of Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo, Cass and Clay counties to help manage their volunteers during the flood. Since it's something that we do on a daily basis, it just made sense for us to be able to assist them with the process. No. Mayor Walker says he's not overly concerned, but how vital is it to start right now? It's very vital right now to start. So we really need to, like Andrew was saying earlier, we're, we're doing two phases right now, so it's really important that we get enough made now so that we can do the deployment later. But it's wonderful for us to be able to get ahead of the game now and get those bags made. So you would say the goal of starting sandbagging now is simply just to get ahead, be prepared? I mean, are we going to be using the sandbagging necessarily? I, I believe we are. I don't think they, you know, we don't want to take the chance of having to operate really fast later either. So it just makes sense. They've been doing this, this is the third year in a row. So I think they're getting the process down. Um, Mayor Wallacher and his engineers and the city officials really know what they're doing. So I have to believe that, you know, we are going to um, be ready on the 14th, as in Monday, um, with volunteers and ready to go. So Now, for those of those viewers who don't know, you're telling me, and this is interesting to me, Cindy, uh, tomorrow you're saying that there's actually going to be a, a dress rehearsal, you call it, or a run-through of kind of the sandbagging efforts. Can you explain to us what, yeah. what that's about? Tomorrow morning we're going to run through things. The city officials just want to make sure that everything's set as far as what we do, what they do, or, you know, the whole process that everything's in place. Sure, sure. So you also said, Cindy, that uh, this is the third year that uh, the community has been you know, helping with sandbagging. Talk about the impact that, that you see on First Link side that the community is really making uh, for Fargo, for Moorhead. 
Well, it's, I remember in 2009, I mean, there was 100,000 volunteers that we managed. Also, there was over 50,000 phone calls that came in on the hotline. So um, there was a lot of need out there, and we definitely came through. We've been on some phone calls lately with other places across the United States who are going through similar sort of things or concerned about it, and they've all heard about what a great job this city and this community has done as far as the volunteers stepping up. So uh, we, are, we are very blessed that we have the community that we do, and, and the ability for them to come through and, and step up has been great. And Dave and I were talking before, we kind of want to know what the goal is of the sandbagging that's starting Monday. Is there a goal you guys are trying to reach with sandbags? Or I've, what's... I've heard different numbers, but I think around $3 million is what they want to get done in this pre-time um, period. So. Three that could have changed, but three million that's what I've heard. Bags. Yes, yeah, three that amazing? Million that is amazing. Yeah. And I know Fargo can do it, and, and I, I know David mm -hmm. is. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. exactly right. And we'll I'm, be there to help. Yeah, and I've heard that um, NDSU is going to try to have a big push for President's Day, too, February right. 21st, when the kids are out of school and it is a day off. So yeah. I know they're working real hard to be able to get other things going, too. Well, of course, as always, North Dakota State University is always there lending a helping hand. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thanks again, Cindy, for being with us tonight. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, once again, February 14th marks the day. Uh, if you're wanting to get in the action, you can, uh, yeah, you can go to myfirstlink.org uh, for all the information. Now stay with us. When we return, SUTV News takes an inside look at the new Menard Hall as the renovations continue. Stay with us. Jimmy Johns? Thank God you made it. I was so hungry, I thought I was gonna die. Jimmy Johns, America's favorite sandwich delivery guys. Nice work, Johnson. What's new on the NDSU campus? See what the students are up to. Check on the latest from Bison Athletics. Catch it here only on Cable One. SU TV News. SUTV News is sponsored in part by Stop and Go. Stop and Go. We're always there. Welcome back to SUTV News. NDSU faculty and staff got a first-hand look at the progress being made in the renovation of Menard Hall. It's the first time anyone on campus has seen the construction work in SUTV Charlie Crane takes us on an adventure of the questions project. before we start or let's go. No, yeah, let's, let's go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Be able to hear me. <laughs> well, the, the, yeah, the north edition, those windows are more like, uh, like the standard windows or the windows used on the well, I was on fourth floor, okay. so yeah. yeah. I was one of them. Just like that one, so. <laughs> You really need lots of, uh, of rugs and tapestries and things to put. And emergency management is also
lobby space and uh, more kind of a lobby space. And, and the North Edition will look similar. Several offices on the fourth floor will be open for temporary use this summer and completion of the renovation project is unknown at this time. The debate rages on in North Dakota about texting while driving. The State House of Representatives passed a bill Tuesday that makes texting while driving illegal. The bill now awaits approval by the Senate. SUTV went out on campus to find student reactions. It's a pretty hefty fine to slap on people for something everybody does, but it is pretty dangerous. I guess that's kind of ridiculous if they just see you texting and driving. If I think it'd be more so appropriate if you were to get in an accident. I think that's a very healthy start, you know, eventually the consequences should get worse from there, I think. I think that's definitely a huge fine for it, but at the same time our speeding tickets are really cheap too, so maybe they should find a middle ground. The law will make texting while driving a primary offense, meaning drivers don't have to commit any other violation to be pulled over. The measure also calls for a two-point penalty on the offender's driving record. Now, Dave, I have to say, texting and driving, man, dangerous stuff. You know, they always say that you oh, don't yeah. realize uh, something until it happens to you. And I have an interesting story. The other day, I was coming down to campus, and I was texting while I was driving. You know, it never happened. You know, I never got in an accident. You know, I thought it was safe. And I actually rear-ended somebody while I was texting. It just distracts you so much. Yeah, and, I, and I, I tell my kids, don't text and drive, and I, you know, I have to watch myself first, so exactly, exactly. it's a hundred dollar fine now. And uh, Minnesota outlawed it, and now North Dakota's seeing some positive uh, feedback and examples there, so hopefully they can have a release. Yeah. Alright, well stick with us. Up next, students stand in the cold to make a difference. We'll have this and more when we return here on SU TV News. Imagine the impact of a place where exploration leads to answers that touch everyone. Where resources and resourcefulness, teamwork and tenacity combine to open new frontiers. Where dreams take the lead and show you tomorrow. and strong. For tickets, call 231-NDSU. Welcome back. NDSU is expanding its brand identity. The Department of Apparel, Design, and Hospitality Management have challenged its students to create an official NDSU tartan. For those not familiar, a tartan is a unique plaid pattern that originally signified a Scottish clan or community. The entries will be judged by originality and interpretation of NDSU's color and history. 
any kind of apparel often is used as a me mechanism of recognition, and most people have gone to a university that they're really proud of. And this is a way to have an item, whether it's a tie or a hat or ultimately a mug or some kind of pen or pocketbook or whatever that's made with the tartan to identify yourself with the fact that you went to NDSU. Bastow Shoup plans to have the winning tartan registered by the Scottish government and ready for bison product implementation by homecoming of 2011. While the recent bitter cold did not keep fraternity Alpha Tau Omega and sorority Kappa Delta inside, they are raising money through the annual Freeze-a-thon. Proceeds go to the Nokomis Daycare Center and SU TV's Gabrielle Lee has more. With temperatures near 10 below and wind chills dipping close to negative 20, staying outside with a loaf and jug on University and 12th Avenue was anything but a picnic. <laughs> These NDSU students are more concerned about raising money for a good cause than worrying about a wind chill warning. We provide scholarships for those families so that they are able to afford quality care. And um, the money that we get from Freezathon helps provide those scholarships to those families. So it's really important. Um, many times those children would have no um, place else to go that they could afford. Greminger was extremely impressed with the 120 straight hours the students volunteered for Freezathon. The big winner, the children in Comus, who range from infant to five years. The money raised directly benefits parents and the children. It helps bring like art supplies and we're able to buy new music and toys for the classroom, books and anything that we need. Last year more than $6,000 was raised with 100% of the proceeds going to Nakoma. Thank you for all of the money that's raised. Without the money, we wouldn't have a place for Kyle. Can you say thank you? Thank you. Good job. Yeah, thanks, Gabrielle. Gabrielle Lee reporting for SUTV News. The freezing for a reason. Since Sunday 12 a.m. to Friday 12 a.m., people did not only donate money, but also hot chocolate, candy, and hand warmers to the students. Now, I have to tell you, I've seen those students out there day and night, 24 hours, even in this neg these negative 40 wind chills, they're out there raising money for Nicole. They couldn't have picked a colder week, but yeah. hey, they've been out there without, a, without a doubt the whole time. I drove past about half an hour ago or so, and it was one degree. It was so cold, and there was four or five of them sitting out enjoying it. You know, I drove so. by the other day after class and there was a couple guys just in shorts out there. So I mean they're they're, they're out there freezing for a reason like you, they said. You almost want to go into the loaf and jug and get them a coffee for 59 cents and help them out a little bit. <laughs> right. But hey, the news on the with the Bison football team is red hot right now. A former star from the Bison is coming back to Fargo. We'll have that story and more when SUTV Sports returns. Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. Imagine the impact of a place where exploration leads to answers that touch everyone. Where resources and resourcefulness, teamwork and tenacity 
combine to open new frontiers, where dreams take the lead and show you tomorrow. SUTV Sports is sponsored in part by Shields. Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields, the world's largest selection of sports, sportswear, and footwear. Welcome back. A former Bison football all-star is back with the team, but with a new role. Tyler Roll has been named a graduate assistant coach of the running backs. Roll is a 2009 graduate and he rushed for nearly 1,500 yards and 22 touchdowns in his career. Well known for his 263 yard rushing effort at the University of Minnesota in 2007. As you see here, Roll will lead an impressive group of running backs including senior DJ McNorton. Roll is a West Fargo native and he spent last season serving as the running backs coach with the Cobbers at Concordia College. While looking to correct a five-game losing streak in games away from the Bison Sports Arena, a date with winless Centenary was just what the Bison men's basketball team needed. The men got the 83-63 win over the Gents, but then lost to a mediocre Oral Roberts team in the final game of their road trip, 73-81. The women saw the same results in their own road trip. They lost to Oral Roberts, 69-98, but rebounded with a win against Centenary. Both teams will return to the cozy confines of the BSA for a doubleheader this Saturday night against the Jaguars from IUPUI. The women's tip-off is at 5 p.m. with the men's contest beginning at 7.30. With only two more meets remaining before the Summit League Indoor Championships, the Bison track and field teams were looking to continue their run towards another Summit League Championship. The Bison were part of 11 teams competing in the Bison Open. The Bison Sports Arena is where the action took place. We start with the women's pole vault. Here, junior Leslie Bros sets a school record with a vault of 13 feet, 11 and a fourth inches. In the high jump, sophomore Tony Tollefson says, It's my birthday. I can win if I want to. She basically jumps over me with a jump of 5 feet, 8 inches. Now, it was an all bison final in the men's 60 meter dash here freshman Dante Smart breaks his own personal best record with a time of 6.83 seconds. Overall, the Bison men and women won 17 events. Both teams will compete in the Iowa State Classic this weekend. While it's freezing in North Dakota, the NDSU softball team is heading west to warmer temperatures for its first action of the season. The Bison are preparing to travel to sunny California with contests against San Diego State and the defending national champion UCLA. Last spring, the women won the Summit League Championship to advance to the NCAA Tournament but lost to Washington and Nebraska in the first round. Playing top competition like UCLA is exactly how the Bison want to start their season. And especially playing against somebody like UCLA, you know, that's going to be a huge challenge for us, you know, going outside for the first time and the talent that they have and the tradition that they have. But, you know, that's the only way we feel we can get better is playing against great teams like that. Because of the weather, the Bison have a series of road trips to start the season. The team won't play at home until April 1st when they are scheduled to take on Summit League opponent IUPUI. With only three duels remaining on the schedule, it is crunch time for the Bison wrestling team. And one Bison has a little more at stake than the rest. SUTV's Ryan Nelson has the full story. Trent Sprinkle is far from your typical college athlete. He's a little more mature than most of the wrestlers. Uh, he's settled down. He's not doing all the college things that a lot of the guys do. As a 23-year-old sophomore, Sprinkle is the oldest member of the team. Well, I recruited Trent out of high school. Uh, and then I found out that they, uh, he was a member of the Mormon Church and was going to go on a mission. And so he went on that two-year mission, and when he got out, he still wanted to come, so we brought him in. And it was not easy for Sprinkle to get to where he is today. Well, after my mission, I, uh, there's some rust on the hinges, so to speak, I guess. And and uh, just took a lot of work. I think the, the red shirt year helped me out a lot, my second year, uh, last year. And that was really beneficial in helping me get back, get my legs under me, and get some confidence wrestling. Not only was his path here a little out of the ordinary, but Sprinkle has a wife, Danielle, and a one-year-old daughter, Paige. I know that whenever I go home, I have a family there waiting for me. It's going to hug me, you know, make me feel better if I'm having a bad day or something. So, I mean, they're the best. Trent knows that his loving family is the reason he is here today. As a father, I mean, the great responsibility I have is to provide for him, and wrestling is a great way to help me do that and just taking steps to having a good career in the future. 
Through the support of his family, teammates, and coaches, Sprinkle is determined to reach his goal of one day becoming an All-American. The next step is just getting into the top eight so you can be an All-American and, and then eventually you know, working to be a national champion. And, and it takes a lot of work, but it's, it feels great. I'm Ryan Nelson for SU TV Sports. At 125 pounds, uh, Sprinkle's been strong for the Bison this year. He's 9-2 and two in duels. He has six pins. Uh, for the team, they have three duels left. They'll be back home starting this Sunday for a duel. And uh, they're 7-3 and three overall, so they're looking to wrap up their season on a strong note. Well, I would say he's uh, pretty good. He has a good supporting crowd behind him, a wife and a one-year-old daughter there. That's you, pretty cool to hear. Can you imagine balancing wrestling, school, and everything all with the family? It's, it's impressive. Right. Hard worker. Definitely. Definitely. And besides wrestling, I just want to mention Bison basketball this weekend, right, Matthew? Bison basketball Saturday night doubleheader. Be there against IUPUI. Yeah, I'll all right. be there too. Uh, student section is the best place to be. Put on your gold, cheer hard. Yep. Put on my yellow. Why the gold? Are we yellow? Are we gold or green? Gold, yellow, gold, green, yellow, whatever, whatever it is. you want to call it these days. <laughs> All right, <laughs> All right we'll, crazies. <laughs> All right, well stick with us. We'll be right back with more SU TV news. talk about how the new NDSU Live student email system will help you stay connected and manage your everyday life. The new features of the NDSU Live will not only save you time, but can also save you from the headache of misplaced email messages, forgotten appointments, and lost files. So, let's talk tech. NDSU Live includes email, calendaring, web-based versions of Microsoft Office, and SkyDrive storage space. It also has a built-in search function, providing you with an easy-to-use tool for finding specific email messages. Sorting through hundreds of email messages in your inbox and folders can be time-consuming, but with the search option, finding email messages, attachments, and contacts is simple. Between school, work, and social activities, it can be difficult to keep track of our hectic daily schedules. NDSU Live includes a built-in calendar system that you can use to manage your schedule with ease. The NDSU Live Scheduling Assistant can help you find the best time to meet with peers, to work on class projects, study for upcoming exams, or to meet up with friends. You can also set reminders for important meetings that you don't want to miss, such as meetings with your instructors or advisor. NDSU Live also includes a SkyDrive with 25 gigabytes of storage capacity. Now you can store your files online instead of carrying a flash drive or flooding your email inbox. SkyDrive also gives you access to online versions of Microsoft Office, including Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. In other words, you don't have to purchase this software to complete your work, and you can conveniently save and store the files on your SkyDrive when you're done. To activate your NDSU Live account, visit the ITS slash NDSU Live website. Well, welcome back to SUTV News. Once again, February 14th, Monday, is not only Valentine's Day, but it also marks the beginning stages of the sandbagging efforts. Uh, if you are a student on the campus of North Dakota State University, uh, make sure uh, you know you can volunteer by going to the NDSU Memorial Union to the West Doors. The volunteer hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the sandbagging efforts will be held on Monday through Saturday. Once again, buses leave the NDSU Memorial Union about every 15 minutes or so. And I have to say, guys, sandbagging, here it comes. It's become, you, guys, you guys have been working out, getting ready for this? I've what? been working out all winter for this. I mean, <laughs> it's almost like a tradition. You can mark it on your calendar. But You know, I was going to take my mom out for Valentine's lunch, and now we're going sandbagging. We're going sandbagging. <laughs> there you go. There's going to be free food, date. too. That's a perfect date. No cost at all. Perfect date. <laughs> uh, be right free, you know, and you get to so. see their true character, their um, physical strength. I mean, right. you get to see the whole picture. There you go. Well, perfect. Hope to see you guys out there. I'll be out there myself. Sounds good. We'll see you out there. <laughs> right. I'll fling a sandbag at you. And we hope to see all you out there as well. Thanks for joining us on SUTV News tonight. Make sure to pick up your copy of The Spectrum.